All right, hello everybody. What is up? This is Pocket Snail sixty eight here. Uh, it's been quite a while since I have done something along these lines. <laughs> it's been when was the last time I did a let's play? Like twenty seventeen or anything? Well, regardless, as you can no doubt see from the footage, today we are starting our let's play of Jack and Daxter: The Precursor Legacy. For those who may have been around for the channel for a minute, you may remember remember this was my first Let's Play back in 2016. Uh, so why am I doing it again? Well, the fact of the matter is, I got the itch to do Let's Plays again. Um, this was originally planned as just a test run of a game for a much bigger project I have planned in a few months, but I, like I said, I just got the itch, so I just really want to do this stuff. And this is basically just going to be a remaster of that of that let's play. Uh, try not to do that. Um, I think this is all fine, right? No, these. Okay, horizontal at least needs to be flipped. And I'll say that stuff is fine. All right, let's actually hop into the game now. Yes, we want to create a new save file. Oh, uh, safe slot one. Wow, I could have done my whole spiel during that. I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose, and why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey! Uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now, I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! Okay, 
I'm fine. I'm fine. What in green tarnation do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go. Misty Island. That's right. And then... And, Daxter, you finally took a much-needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man, are you gonna keep yapping, or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping, because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Carl Acheron, the Sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer, at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark, gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there! Before I turn you both into ferns! I always forget how cutscene heavy this game is for a platform at the start. Anyways, we are yeah. finally into the game. This for device the... is a communicator. With it, my father right. and I can give you advice at any time during your quest. Yes, yes, I know. Okay, so for those who have never played Jack and Daxter before and are for some reason wanting to use this to play along, let's go over the controls real quick. X is your jump, tap it twice for a double jump, square is a punch, circle is a little spin kick, L1 crouches, if you press X, while, if you use L1 while moving, Jack will do a roll, and if you press X, he does a long roll. Uh, when you're crouched and jump, he does a high jump, and you can combine a lot of this stuff together to make some cool moves. Uh, these chests right here, they, can, they contain, not content, train, contain green eco, which is your life force in this game. Uh, okay, these I was about to say. shaped things are precursor orbs. Collect enough of them, and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. Alright, so these precursor orbs, they're kind of a main collectible in this game. You're going to be finding a lot of them. I meant to jump up that ledge there. But the main thing you need the orbs for... This is a power cell. The most important precursor artifact you can find. You need to collect 20 of these so I can power the heat shield for your A-grab zoomer. Yep. You need power cells, which are the main collectible to progress in this game. And also, as you can see here on this screen, sorry that I'm just saying a lot and it kind of seems overwhelming. Um, when I first did this Let's Play in 2016, uh, I only had a PS2 copy of the game. Right now I'm playing on the PS3. There is a PS4 version of the game that is playable hey, on a... I found one of my scout flies. I sent seven of them to each area to look for power cells, but the lurkers must have captured them all. Thanks, Kira. Uh, there is a PS4 version of the game that is playable on PS5. However, that's not the most recommended version of the game. It has a lot of issues that aren't present in the PS2 and PS3 versions. So if you're picking a version of the game, I'd say... 
PS3 would probably be the highest, followed by PS2. PS5 or PS4, that's all you have, and don't touch the Vita version of this game. That version of the game is completely broken. So, as we go here through our first level, known as... I'm sure we can, Kira. So that's just telling us that every area will have seven scout flies in it to get a um uh pre power cell. <laughs> Always get the stuff confused each time. So while we're just going through this first level, guys are rock. Uh, one thing I will say, this one neat thing about this game, I'm trying to choose my words here. I haven't had to do something like this in a long time, as you can tell. Um, this was the. That's blue eco. Which Come on, really? The energy of motion. Blue Eco allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. Yeah, trying to not talk over characters here. This was the first 3D platformer with a full unbroken world from start to finish. There's points later in the game that you'll be able to see where we can see these early areas all the way from there. cluster you pick up increases the time you can use its power. So you're just telling us as we pick up more eco, we'll be able to use it longer. Uh, yeah, there's no loading screens or anything from the start to end of the game besides, you know, actually loading into the game, but what game doesn't have those, really? Um, that might not sound like a lot nowadays, but keep in mind, this game came out in 2002. This is a precursor door. <laughs> it can only Wasn't even be meaning to do that. by approaching the door while channeling blue eco through your body. Uh, hopefully I don't die here, because there is, like, a giant fish that'll eat you if you, uh, get out of bounds. Um, yeah, that's not considered a lot nowadays, but keep in mind, this game came out in 2002 on the PlayStation 2 itself. The system was only two years old at the time, and yet Naughty Dog was able to make a completely open-world game like this on that hardware. I just think that's pretty neat. Um, get this... In fact, I noticed that while we were swimming, uh, oh yeah, Triangle brings up a first person view, I forgot to mention that. Over there, that's Samos' hut where we started the game, and that's actually the island that Jack and Daxter went to in the opening cutscene. So already we can see like the later, not even later, just like the parts of the world that we saw in the cutscene, while this is kind of just the tutorial area. How did I not fall into those spikes by the way? Sorry if I'm talking so fast, uh, by the way. I'm kind of subconsciously noticing that. That's a blue eco vent. More concentrated than the floating clusters. This vent will give you a full charge of blue eco, letting you use it for the maximum time. Thank you, Kira. Um, I have always had an issue with that, especially when I get excitable. So I'm trying my best to not do that too much, but uh, accidents are going to happen. Unfortunately. Good work. The blue eco caused the door to open. With blue eco, you can breathe energy into all kinds of precursor artifacts that have lain dormant for years. Let's see if there's anything up here. There's not. Those little green balls of energy on the ground are a type of eco. Oh, this is where we... <laughs> Pick up 50 small green ecos, or one big green one, to increase your health. Yeah, even though we've encountered green eco plenty of times up to this point, this is where the game first mentions it, which I just think is funny. You can jump once, then jump again in the air to reach even higher ledges. <laughs> And that's something the game does right there. It'll tell you when you have all the stuff collected in area. At least the precursor orbs. You'll have to go into the menu to see the power cells and scout flies, unfortunately. And this is another thing that can be powered by Blue Eco. Just a little platform to fly us back down. And with that, we should have... Yep, we have everything in Geyser Rock. Um, if you press the buttons on the side, Circle brings up options. We showed that at the very start. But yeah, there's 2,000 uh, precursor orbs in this game. Um, pressing square just brings you to this menu. It doesn't tell you how many power cells there are. And there's 112 of the scout flies. I always get the buttons mixed up in these menus, by the way.
Again, this... Oh, cutscene. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. Ah, then no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're, uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. Now, all of you, get out of here! Alright, um, what was I talking about just then? Uh, I immediately forgot, unfortunately. Um, there's some of the with the buttons, I'm sure. So, this is interesting right here. Well, probably not too interesting if you're a fan of platformers. Um, this plant right here, let me step away from it to give you a better view of it. Uh, this is actually a plant from the Crash Bandicoot series of games. Uh, in fact, while this is probably something that's super obvious, to, again, to anyone who's played Crash Bandicoot, uh, what's not obvious, in the September 18th, 2001 demo disc version of the game, the plant actually just straight up uses the Crash Bandicoot, Bandicoot 2 model of it, whereas this is more of an edited version now. Um, Naughty Dog probably did that to avoid breaking contract, if I'm correct. The same must have anything to say? Some brave adventurers you two are. Back already and without clearing my block eco harvesters. <laughs> oh, he They're just reminds you side of, of the, uh, beach, the mission. Boys. No. Get over oh, me. that's funny that they do the shake thing again. Anyone? Anyone at all? Come in. So yeah, something I never particularly did as a kid is you can actually talk to Samos and uh, right down here, Kira to get, like, missions for the local area. Obviously, I just kind of just found this out all on my own, but... Hey, baby! What do you say you and I go cruising on this A-Grab Zoomer? Rule number one. I don't date animals. Ah, uh, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Listen. If you need something to keep you busy, my father always talked about an ancient precursor pipeline hidden deep underground. Some of these pipes end in vents from which eco flows freely, and some have been capped off so that the eco is sealed back. There must be a way to turn the capped vents on. I traced part of the pipeline back to the Forbidden Temple. Maybe you should look there for some type of switch. Or I had to drink some water during that cutscene, so that's why it took me a moment. Alright, and here's kind of our first area, Sandover Village. Um, I'll say, I'll say before we actually go and uh, go through it though, uh, we're gonna call it there and we're gonna explore Sandover Village and clean Samos' Eco Harvesters in the next episode. So thank you all for watching and I will see you guys next time.